Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes here to take a look at the media picks for the SEC basketball season and the all-SEC teams. Blake and I had actually planned to be down there. Life happened. We couldn't make it this year to media days. We got credentialed then couldn't go. There's always next year, but we will react to this as we see the press release. And Blake, no big shock here. Kentucky picked to win the SEC, and that's probably the pick that I would make, too. We'll make our picks later. We're still sort of digesting everyone's roster. I want to do that before we make our picks. But I think Kentucky, if you put a gun to my head and make me make a pick today, that's who I'd take. That's who the media took as well. Yeah, these are not our picks. Um, We will have our picks before the season starts, uh, as always. But... I mean, look, <laughs> you don't you don't want me to get started on a rant do you, about the the preseason media poll in SEC basketball because I've done that for years now, and everyone who's followed would, my stuff I would love to hear your rants. Well, everyone knows what I think about preseason polls in any field, really. Um, but I think specifically in SEC basketball, it it is what it is. You know, it's um, I think this one, to be honest with you, Chris, I think in past years there have been some that have been kind of head scratching in terms of um, some of the order and, and you know, that, but this one to me, like I, I look down one through 14, like I can't give you a lot of arguments in terms of no. where this team should be, where that team should be. Like this is about the same probably the, as I would have minus a couple of changes, um, which we will, you know, tease that we will get to those when we do ours before the season starts. Uh, we'll probably do ours eh, maybe a week or two before the season starts. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not surprised by this. Am I surprised that the media has picked Kentucky to win the SEC in basketball? No, um, that's just that is more often than not going to be the case. And uh, it's just a product of what John Calipari has done and the fact that he's getting the unanimous player of the year, uh, not just in the SEC, but in the country back to leading the way. Um, so not surprised to see Kentucky there. As I've said, my one through three at this very moment, depending on I don't know what order I'm going to put them in yet, but. Kentucky, Arkansas, Tennessee are one through three in the uh, media poll. That's who would be my one through three. Just don't know what order I put them in at this moment. But, um, you know, then I think behind that, you can start making your arguments for Alabama versus Auburn or, you know, is A&M, are they as high maybe as some people think they're going to be? Um, you know, could a team like Missouri with Dennis Gates win the entire league? I mean, who knows, Chris? I mean, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying they couldn't, right? Because, uh, sorry, I had to throw in my Dennis Gates stuff there i mean look i i'm not saying i put missouri at number one right now but we all know um but we all know no i'm just i'm just messing with you You know for them to be at 11 i've said before i think they could be kind of the sleeper team but look even as the sleeper team i I can't say i'd move them up more than maybe you know a few spots uh from that from where they have them in the in the poll so um have, have we read the poll, Chris? I don't remember. Did we do that? Did we do the one through? We, we have not read the poll. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to give you my thoughts as I see this. Okay. I felt like there's five teams at the top, and then a sixth team in my mind. Uh, and again, as I research some of these other teams, I mean, I know the I know the rosters a decent amount, but when you dive in a little bit, sometimes you find stuff you missed. I've thought Kentucky, Arkansas, Tennessee, Auburn, Alabama where you're top five in some order. I'm not sure how much separation there is in those. In my mind, it's a top five. Then I would probably go A&M six and, and maybe Florida seven uh, with, with Castleton and some other good players there that they've got. That's the way this went. Uh, again, in my mind, it's uh, Kentucky would be my one. Arkansas, Tennessee, Auburn, Alabama, my next four teams in some order. A&M would be my sixth team. And and then, you know, the, the middle of the pack is kind of my middle of the pack, too. I, I just look at this. I'm having the same reaction that you have is that I don't see anything in the rankings that looks egregiously out of place. Yeah, and just to clarify, that is the order that they're in, the top seven. Kentucky, Arkansas, yes. Tennessee, Auburn, Alabama, A&M, Florida, um, LSU 8, Ole Miss 9, Mississippi State 10, Missouri 11, Vanderbilt 12, Georgia 13, South Carolina 14. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I, and that's the thing is like, I say it every year, like these, these polls are meaningless. Yes, they're fun to do, but, um, you know, until you start playing games, it's, 
it's a projection. It's a matter of, you know, just like it says, right? It's a predicted order of finish. This is what people individually are predicting will be the order of finish in the SEC. And that's it. There's nothing more to it. Um, but we like to have fun with rankings and that's what we do. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, this entire list, one through 14, you know, if you're, if you're a fan of one of these teams, uh, and you're at least happy with the state of your program, you could probably justify your team being higher. Um, you know, and I think that's again, where it sits that I'll tell you this, I'll, I'll give you this kind of insight into where I'm at right now. I think the two teams to me are that are the biggest, I don't want to say the biggest mystery because I think that the two teams I'm going to have a hardest time putting somewhere and they're from the same state. And that is Ole Miss and Mississippi state. Like mm -hmm. I, they're nine and 10 in the preseason media poll. I have no idea where I'm going to wind up putting them just yet in mind because I, I just think these are two teams that are interesting for different reasons. Um, we talked about Ole Miss last year, the injury situation. I mean, they were just – how could you expect anything different than what you got with them? They were inconsistent, but they just had so many guys miss games due to injuries. Mississippi State, you know, they got a pretty good nucleus back, and I wonder if maybe we're, we're kind of undervaluing what Chris Jans could do there in year one with them um he's got he's put together a pretty good roster there so but those are the two that are the toughest for me to figure out right now i think um so i think it's kind of interesting they wind up nine and ten in this preseason uh media poll i would call the seven to eleven grouping the wild card tier florida lsu old miss mississippi state missouri is the order that the voters put them in i would probably go those five teams and those five spots in some order. Again, I, I think once we dig in and we are previewing all 14 teams individually, I think we're six in as we speak. And so as I get to dive into these other rosters, like you were, you were seeing things like Vanderbilt. We did Vanderbilt already. Vanderbilt is 12. I think we both thought Vandy, you know, could be the worst team in the league. But then we dove in and like, hey, there's a little more meat to the roster than, than maybe we originally realized. Um, and, and, and Vandy is 12, and I think in a lot of years, you know, you go back 10 or 12 years, you could see Vanderbilt six or, or seven perhaps. I, I just think that speaks to what the league has become, how it's competitive. And, and if you want to go step further, um, if you want to judge a league by its worst teams, I think Vandy, Georgia, South Carolina, you know, maybe all NIT level teams, and that's not going to all happen like that because – there's not enough wins to go around, but the point is, even at the bottom of the league, you got some teams that then on a given night could knock off some teams near the top, and in the middle of the league, those five teams I mentioned earlier, you got a team out of that tier or two that could sneak in and make the NCAA tournament. But again, probably not all of them because there's only so many wins to go around, but I just think it's a very intriguing league. Yeah. No, it, it, it is. And um, I was curious who would be at the last spot uh, from the the preseason media poll. South Carolina there doesn't shock me. I, you know, I think some people would have would put Georgia there. Um, I, did we did we ever talk about the Ken Palm rankings? I don't know if we did that yet or not. We um, did not. OK, well, I mean, we're not going to we're not going to do a separate video on it. So I think it is worth just bringing up here in this discussion. If you've looked at those thus far. Um, Georgia was 15 spots below South Carolina in the preseason Ken Palm rings. Let's keep this in mind too. Everyone's going to have their thoughts on Ken Palm. Um, but it takes those a little while to, to get to where they need to be. This is, again, this is a preseason set and there are a lot of factors that go into it. Some, you know, that aren't necessarily, I mean, it's just, the, these are again, the same way, like these are what they are. Um, these are preseason rankings. And there's a lot more data, of course, involved in the, the Ken Palm one. So it takes them a little while, I think, to, to kind of get to where they need to be, if that makes sense. Um, but, you know, so, so again, you look at that, like Kentucky and Tennessee were two of the top five teams in Ken Palm's preseason uh, top five. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, look, Chris, I mean, look, I don't want to go, I don't want to go too far into this here, but if we're talking about the teams that are picked in the bottom four, Missouri, Vanderbilt, Georgia, South Carolina, we did our video on Vanderbilt. We said that I think there's maybe a little more meat on the bone there than people realize, even without Scottie Pippen. Um, but, you know, if you're asking me for a sleeper team right now, and don't worry, we've got a full eight-hour 
video coming on our Missouri basketball preview. Uh, may go 15 hours. We'll just have to see, Chris. I'm not sure. You know, we may have to do like a 15 part series on our Missouri basketball preview. Seven seven hours, probably fully on Dennis Gates's career. But of course, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But they are the team that the more I look at their roster, the more I kind of dissect what they could be. I, and I'm not just saying this because of our our, our running theme of, of Dennis Gates, but they have a very, you know, for a year one roster for a new coach, like there's a lot to like, I think about it. It's a lot of different pieces um, that again, chemistry will matter here. And I think just seeing how it all comes together, um, you know, has yet to be seen, but there's a lot of talent on that roster. And I think that's kind of like mm-hmm. we said with Vanderbilt, there's sneaky good talent there still, even without Scotty Pippen, Cario Quindo still at Georgia. I've said before with Georgia, I think Mike White will do a better job there than people think. Um, we talked about Jackson reclassifying, joining South Carolina. So like those are your bottom four teams. And I think there have been years recently where we've looked at a couple of those bottom teams and said, Ooh, you know, it's like they, we, we just kind of knew they were not going to be very good. Uh, but with yeah. these teams, look, somebody's got to lose a game. Let me, somebody's got to finish 14th, but I think there's maybe more upside with this bottom tier. Uh, again, bottom tier per the preseason media poll um, than, than maybe there has been in years past. Well, okay, let's pick Georgia as example. Georgia's 14 in Ken Palm, as you mentioned, which is 93. I don't know, has the SEC ever had a year where all 14 teams were top 100 Ken Palm? I would – Almost bet the house. No. Well, I mean, we, there's a, we there's know. a big difference between last place Georgia this year and last place Georgia last year. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Like, I think Georgia specifically the past, well, last year, Vanderbilt the past, what, several seasons before that at times, even though maybe Vanderbilt was kind of deceiving in terms of one of those years. But um, yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, but, but again, uh, here's, here's the thing too, Chris, like we say all this, but like, there is a good chance that one or a couple of these teams are going to, you know, have an injury and something significantly is going to change what their upside is. But as of right now, um, I don't know, maybe I just, yeah, I, I like the upside of this. Let's just say, I don't know, let's group in the entire bottom half of the league. Right. Um, I like the upside of the, that tier of teams heading into the season, maybe a bit more than I have in recent years. So, well, what have I been saying all year in football? And what did I say yesterday in our midseason awards? I said the, the thing that I like that I think is the most underrated about the league in football is you look across the board and you got, you know, 12, 13 pretty respectable teams. And and even if you want to go to the 14th, which is Vandy, this year's Vandy is better than last year's Vandy. I see the same thing in the league. I don't see an absolute pushover anywhere. I I see pretty good coaches. I see teams that are getting after it and recruiting. I see teams that are hitting it hard in the transfer portal. Uh, And and when you see the 14 teams all ranked in the top 93 of Ken Palm, um, I I think that's something. If you want to go to Bart Torvik, uh, he's got 12 teams in the top 100, and those 12 are all within the top 78. South Carolina just missed it at 103, Georgia at 129. Um, Speaking of those, Ken Palm had Kentucky one in the country, Tennessee four in the country. Bart Torvik has got Tennessee three in the country and Kentucky eight. So you're you're seeing the computers uh, suggest Tennessee and Kentucky are maybe the best team in some order. Yeah. So I think that's about right. Um, I told you we did our Tennessee preview. I said maybe I didn't give Tennessee enough credit until I really went deep into their roster. But I think you you can make the case that Tennessee may be the team to beat. Um, but again, I think you make that same case for Kentucky. I think you make the same case for Arkansas right now. And I don't – you know me. I'm always like the optimist before the season starts. Like I try to look at the – the potential of every team. And there are some teams you're just going to be like, look, they're just don't, they're not going to be very good. Uh, but you know, I think there's, there is a lot of upside and even like an Alabama, I think if everything comes together, I think Alabama can compete for the league title. Same with Auburn. Um, sure. so I, I think those top five teams, yeah, I mean, they're, they're all going to be preseason top 20 teams. Um, yeah, I, I assume some polls have already come out. We may have already talked about it. I can't remember, but, um, yeah. So, so I think that's kind of your group. And then, 
you know, here's the thing too. We haven't really talked about, I think the two wild cards beyond the, the other two wild cards I talked about Florida and LSU. I think Florida and LSU are the two teams that, um, you know, what they've done there, Todd gold and the talent he's brought into Florida, getting Castleton back was huge because he's a first team all SEC player. We'll talk about that in a second. And then LSU and what Matt McMahon's done, the, the roster has been rebuilt here from literally nothing. Um, and I think both of those are NCAA tournament teams. Uh, so I think that's kind of the, the fun thing to think about too. So yeah. Um, you know, again, don't for everyone out there, we do this every year. Don't, don't overreact to the preseason media poll because it doesn't mean a whole lot, but, um, it just kind of gives you a gauge on where people think everything could finish. Um, but we will have our official poll coming, uh, soon here in the next, I don't know, probably week or so. All right, I'm going to pull up the preseason AP poll because that came out this week. We talked about that, Kentucky, didn't we? I don't, I don't remember. I don't think said. we did. Kentucky 4, Arkansas 10. So Tennessee not in the top 10, but Tennessee is at 11. Auburn 15, Alabama 20. Okay, so yeah. And uh, A&M did miss it here. A&M was the, the basically the, the first team out. Team. Yeah. Yeah, um, SEC teams getting votes. Florida got three votes and that's it. So anyway. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is. So uh all right, Chris, let's talk about these uh these player awards here. N- nothing really shocking. First team, Nick Smith, Colin Castleton, Oscar Shibwe, Savir Wheeler, and Santiago Vescovi. I mean, I, I guess people could push back on Nick Smith Jr. just because he's not played a game so. yet, but but I mean we're not, but he'd be yeah, on I mean list. for yeah. no 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 surprises here that I can I mean it's it's a I don't know that it's a clear cut best five, but it's it's nothing that you can take issue with. I don't think yeah that that's your thing is like you could argue, you know, your player here or there, I suppose, if you're rooting for a certain team, but I'm not going to argue against this this five uh, because I think, I mean, for me, Chris, and all honesty, like I don't know that I would be changing mine all that much here, uh, unless maybe you wanted to. I don't know, like I, I don't. Like again, you could, the Quinterly thing is like all based around the injury. If if Quinterly was coming into the season fully healthy, I think you could make the case for putting him ahead of someone on that list. Although it's not going to be Sheway, it's not going to be Castleton. Not going to be Vescovy, I don't think. Um, maybe probably not going to be Smith. I, maybe Wheeler. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I can't argue too much with this this first five, um, unless you want to say maybe exchange one of the Tennessee players for another. But Vescovy's numbers are what they are. I think he's got to be on there. Um, so yeah, I mean this this first team All SEC. I I'm not complaining about this group. So okay, second team freshman Brandon Miller of Alabama. Another Alabama player, Javon Quinterly, K.J. Williams of LSU, the Murray State transfer, and then two Vols, Josiah Jordan-James and Zakai Ziegler. And the SEC only did two teams, uh, so that's as far as it goes. By the way, Shibway, the player of the year, uh, if we didn't mention that. But any any shockers? I mean, the, the, the thing that you could nitpick is Quinterly is not going to play a full season. They do think he will back be back for SEC play. I I don't know that I would go Quinterly on the team because I do think adding value in the out of conference schedule matters. But if you want to say who are going to be the best ten players once you get to SEC play, and that's your definition, I don't have an issue with it. Um, Miller again, another kid who's not played a game. I, I'm I'm not shocked to see Josiah Jordan James or Zakai Ziegler on the team and I'm not at all saying they're undeserving. I'm I guess I'm a little surprised because what you usually see on these teams is scoring averages, right? Guys that averaged 13 or 14 last year. Like I think a lot of times one thing that rubs me the wrong way when I see all SEC teams or and I'm not just picking on the SEC. This could be any league. It seems to go by scoring average. Well, this guy averaged 17 points a game. Well, you know, no, never mind if his shooting wasn't that efficient. And guys that get left off are guys that do a lot of other things that get 
a good number of steals, get, you know, maybe not lead the league because that gets people's attention, but guys that do a lot of other things, steals, blocks, you know, good assist to turnover ratios, you usually see scoring take precedence over a balanced player with a good skill set across the board who is efficient. Um, that's why I'm a little surprised to see Josiah Jordan James and Zakai Ziegler on those teams. Again, I would probably put them there too, but usually voters lean more towards scoring and stuff rather than the things that these guys do. I think you've gotten better at that though. Um, yeah. I think the voting has gotten much better recognizing those kind of things. Um, you know, and the other thing is, I don't want to say this, you know, callously, but like, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, the preseason, all SEC teams, like, it just doesn't matter. Like, it's it's good to give you a kind of a glimpse into who could be the best players. But, you know, the the ones that really matter, the ones at the end of the season, which, by the way, I'm going to put my stance here, Chris. <laughs> can we get this? Can we get the same format at the end of the season? Can we get two all SEC teams with five players each on there? Uh, I'm doing like my yes. John Rothstein rant right now. I don't need nine players on the first team all SEC. I don't need, you know, 15 on the second team. Like, just give me five players on each each team. That's all I want. Like, that's all I'm asking for. I apologize if it's going to leave some people off. That's okay. Um, they'll be fine. We just, we just need to stop giving 22 players, um, you know, all SEC record. And again, I'm not saying that because, you know, this is my league here, but I just, I think it's, um, I like seeing the five because five players play basketball the last time on the court at one time from what I can remember. Um, unless those rules have changed as well this season. But the second team, I'm glad to see KJ Williams on there because I thought maybe people would just maybe look at him and say, well, it's just a you know, mid major guy transferring up to LSU. But as we said, Murray State was a really good program. I think he will be an all ACC player, um, especially if LSU is a an NCAA tournament team. Also, like to see Brandon Miller on there too because we talked about him in our Alabama preview. Tons of upside there. Um, and he will kind of, I think, be right there, you know, is in the conversation as their most impactful player. We talked about Mark Sears and Burnett and all those guys. They will certainly play a, a factor as well as Quinterly, uh, which like I said to you, I, I would I would have Quinterly on my list just for the the fact that this isn't an end of season or this is kind of projecting ahead. And and I think if he's back with SEC play, he deserves to probably be on there. Um and again the, the two Tennessee players, I don't think you could keep James or Ziegler off there. I think they have to be on there somewhere in the top ten players in the league entering the season. I'm trying to think, Chris, and and I know people are gonna chime in with their own opinions on this. I'm trying to think of who I'm forgetting, right? Um, who who am I forgetting that should be a Quindo, maybe? But I think Georgia being the 13th team, fair or unfair, I just don't think he was going to be on there. Um, I mean, you you go ahead with some what you're going to say. I, I've got a couple more I'm going to look up here, but I think that's one. But you know, it's like who you put him ahead of, right? So I think Isaiah Mosley is an interesting one. I'm not just saying that because it's Missouri, but I mean, this is a guy that averaged 20 points a game last year and six rebounds and shot 50% from the floor. That's why I think Missouri, my, you know, expectations for them are a bit higher now with him on the roster. So, yeah, I mean, there's, you could pick, honestly, Chris, you could probably pick several players from that Auburn team. Uh, it's just a matter of like, who are you picking, right? Like who's going to be, whether it's Broom mm -hmm. or, you know, who's it going to be that maybe statistically shines enough to be on that list? Um, so, yeah, th those are all kind of interesting ones you could throw out, I suppose. Yeah, okay. Uh, to start where you started with Cario Quindo, that's probably that's probably my biggest omission in, in, in my mind. Um, and you said, well, Georgia's 13th. Well, what was Vandy last year, 13 or 14? And Scotty Pippen Jr. was preseason player of the year. We said – we don't think we'd make him our pick because we can't see him him winning the postseason player of the year uh, and being on a team that was probably not going to escape the Wednesday night game of the SEC tournament. That is exactly how it played out. Um, Bandy played on Wednesday, and Pippen made all-SEC first team on that eight-man team, but he didn't win player of the year. Of course, Oscar Sheboy made it very easy for everybody in that regard. But, okay, I when, when you saw my head bob off screen a minute ago, the reason that happened, I wanted to grab Lindy's, which does a pretty good job of some things. One is it, it picks three teams, which I don't necessarily agree with Lindy's picks. 
Uh, but having five other players gives you a list of people we may have forgotten. The other thing Lindy's does is it gives you the returning leaders. And when I look at the returning scoring leaders, it kind of underlines the point I made earlier that it looks like the voters have taken a different twist with how they pick the team. Uh, and I'm, I'm giving you a lot here, so I apologize. Uh, to answer your question, probably the most notable omission – Maybe Kobe Brown at Missouri, who had a nice year a year ago. Lindy's had him first team, and Lindy's only picked five guys. I don't know that I would go Kobe Brown on the first team or two, but I could be talked into it. So that's one that that would be on the the short list. Cario Quindo would be mine. Lindy's had Braylon Bridges on its second team at Georgia, who was a stat sheet stuffer a year ago. Uh, but it, in, in my mind, you had to discount that because of how bad that team was. Um, you had to you had to lay the blame somewhere. Maybe that's fair. Maybe that's not. Um, Lindy's had Gigi Jackson at South Carolina on its second team. Its third team, Wendell Green Jr., Tyrese Radford, Kaysen Wallace, Anthony Black, and Brandon Miller. Miller, of course, made the second team. So there's that. Um, I'm going to let you react to that because I've thrown a lot at you. And then I'm going to talk about the returning scores who didn't make the team. Um, let's see, Kobe Brown. That's a good one. Again, I just don't know, you know, when you've got adding Mosley to the mix and all that at Missouri, you know, I'm curious as scoring wise, you know, what's that look like from a production standpoint? Um, so I think that's an interesting one. I'm trying to remember who else you said. Gigi Jackson, certainly a possibility, but I think it's, I want to see South Carolina probably before I'm figuring out, you know, what to do individually with some of those guys. Um, I'm trying to remember who else you just mentioned. Um, who else did you say they had on the second team? Raylan Bridges. I, th- yeah. I mean, like, it, and here's the thing, right? All these names we're mentioning, and it's, it goes back to my rant earlier. This is why you only have 10 players on these two teams and the preseason teams. If there were more, sure. But right now, I don't think there's anyone you mentioned that I'm putting ahead of the other guys that that are on there. Um, You know, maybe you could argue a Kobe Brown over a KJ Williams, but I I don't, like I said, I I think it's, I like these 10 that were picked and you could argue in what order, but I, I think the three Tennessee guys, to me for sure, belong on there. I think we're not even, we haven't even talked about any of the Kentucky freshmen, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I mean, those guys could, well, would it surprise me at all if, you know, one of those guys winds up on there too? No. Um, you know, Livingston or Wallace. No, like it's just, so I think it's, again, we're, you and I were so in depth on this stuff and I like to think that's what people appreciate, but um, you know, it's just, it kind of is what it is. And, and I think that there's a lot of names you could throw out there as possibilities, but at the end of the day, until we actually get on the court, this is just um, this is fun to talk about, but that's about it. So, okay, I'll give you some more names that that we have not broached yet. Okay, uh, Mark Sears at Alabama would not be surprised if he winds up on the list at the end of the year. You mentioned Broom at Auburn. Would uh, be that's that's one that could go on your like if you're making a list of like thirty guys to to say oh. I'll pick by fifteen or whatever. Which, SEC by the way, does. I bet you we, we wind up doing. Um, <laughs> right. Um, Alan Flanagan. What is Alan Flanagan this year? I mean, I, I don't know that I'd pick him in my 15 best players, but you, you do remember the year, the end of the year two years ago when he was healthy and carried that team. Um, here's here's one. I'm I'm a little surprised this guy was forgotten too. Henry Coleman the third. Awfully good for AM when a m made that run a year ago. Nowhere to be found uh, between the SEC or Athlon. And and that's just like just looking at, at those five teams. Um, those five being Auburn, Tennessee, Alabama. I'm sorry, six teams. Kentucky, Arkansas. Just, just perusing those rosters for a minute. Um, yeah. So I'm not even looking at the bottom half of the – and by the way, we were kind of doing this stream of consciousness – yeah, we're doing we this haven't. just after this was released. And so if there were a deeper dive and we had more time, uh, yes, we would we would come up with more names. One more thing. Um, top 10 returning scores in order. Oscar Shibway, Colin Castleton, Cario Aquindo, third. Again, that's, that's where I'm surprised that he didn't make a team. Because just based, based on scoring average, he generally would make a preseason all-league team. 
Then it goes Quinterly, Vescovy, Braylon Bridges, Kobe Brown, Katie Johnson, Jordan Wright, Wendell Green Jr. Yeah. Um, look, if here's the thing, right? Is like if Auburn finishes in the top four, top five, I, someone's probably going to wind up there on that list, or maybe there's just a lot of balance and you don't have one of those guys. Um, we talk about like the Arkansas group. We mentioned Nick Smith on the first team. Like I've said before, Anthony Black wouldn't be surprised if he winds up on one of these teams. Um, but this is also, you know, just part of the the fun and the limitations of having five guys on each of these teams, uh, which I think the SEC at the end of the season, there are one last season, there were nine on the first team and there were eight on the second team. So, um, so find your top 17 and factor them into the mix, I suppose for the end of season awards. Um, but, but yeah, like Henry Coleman bridges, those, I mean, Aquendo, we've talked about him. Um, yeah. So, so all those guys I think are, are there and, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good group of players, but um, one thing that is not under debate, Chris, is the SEC player of the year. And I think that was only, was only one choice for that. So, all right, I'm, I'm going to do an impromptu stump the Blake. Oh boy. My goodness. And, and I gave you a little bit of a cheat because I just named off the top 10 scores. So maybe this will be, were you listening to me? Were you Probably comprehending? Th- this is, this is hard to believe. There are six players. Yeah, most most people don't listen. My wife doesn't listen to me. I don't blame her. Um, there there are ten, there are six guys that are in both the top ten scores and the top ten rebounders. This is pretty astonishing. Um, who were the six players? Oh God! I mean, a, cu- a couple of them are easy, right? Like, All right, now hold on. Top ten. What are we talking about here? The top ten. Scores these these are returning players. The top ten scores in the top 10 rebounders there are six players who appear on both lists okay now hold on we're just talking about in the sec or we're talking about guys who have come just the just in the sec and this just returning players top scores and top rebounders um the oscar shibway has got to be one that is one colin castle was tops in both one. colin castleton was two in both scores and rebounders um Would you like some hints? Vescovy? Was he a good rebounder? V- that That's the one that I thought you would have the hardest time getting because I don't think of him as a rebounder. Santiago Vescovy is the number 10 returning rebounder in terms of average. I, I would not have guessed that. Okay. Um, I don't think Henry Coleman was in the top By the way, scores. Vescovy was also top five in assists. I don't think Coleman was in the top 10 scores, but I may be wrong. Vescovy was also in the top five of returning three point shooters in terms of percentage. Uh, no, Coleman was in. Coleman was on the rebounding list, but not on the scoring list. So what have I gotten? Three. This is riveting. You I got three, people. but um, I, I'm sure James. I don't think was the top scorer, but maybe I'm wrong about that one. No, he made the rebounding list, but not the scoring list. I got nothing else. Okay, um, two we've already talked about, and you just forgot. Probably. I'll give you a team. Uh, we've Missouri. covered 55 names in the past 15 minutes, so I'm I've, I've forgotten just aggravating somebody. you at this point. No, but I'm Kobe just Kobe Brown saying, was on the list. Okay, I could see that. I forgot Braylon about that. Bridges was on the list. He's a top 10 uh, the, Yeah. Oh, didn't realize that. The The other one we have not mentioned at all. Sorry. Sorry to whoever that is. I will I will give you a hint. He's he's on a bottom four team. Jordan Wright? Jordan Wright. Yeah. I could see him making his way onto an all SEC team, depending on what Vanderbilt does this season. So yeah. yeah. Any parting thoughts on the SEC media poll? The AP top 25, anything we've talked about. <laughs> this conversation went way deeper than I expected it to. We covered a lot of ground here, but uh, you know what? That's why you guys hit that subscribe button because we um, we started off, we're going to spend about 10 minutes talking about just the predicted order of finish, and we, as always, uh, go down rabbit holes. And it's kind of fun, though, because we are 
Chris, I mean, let's think about it. We're season starts November the seventh, so we are. I mean, we're less we're than three weeks out. Three weeks away here from the start of basketball season. I know everyone geared up. Football is you know hot and heavy. Everything's going on right now, but yeah, basketball season is almost here. And um, so if you enjoy our football coverage, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button because our basketball coverage is back, and um, we will have game previews, reaction, all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, there, there will be a lot of fun stuff coming, so hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoy our coverage, support our title sponsor. That stakes. It costs you nothing to support our title sponsor. There are lots of big games coming up this weekend in SEC football. You can see this scrolling across the ticker. You can also see how to sign up for stakes. That's by going to play with stakes forward. Excuse me, playwithstakes.com forward slash 14. Place your predictions on the questions that we put in the app. Our screen name is Southeastern14. If you use the invite code Southeastern14 when you sign up, you'll get a double welcome bonus. It is free to join, free to play, have some fun, and, and help out our presenting sponsor. Okay, like Blake said, hit that subscribe button so you get all our content. We cover football basketball and baseball all with a great deal of research and passion so just know that's coming if you're new to our channel thank you for watching we've got content up pretty much daily usually multiple items again hit that subscribe button thank you for watching we'll see you again soon